Hi there, I want to share about something that I've been part of coordinating and also participating in for many years, and that is create-a-thons. The basic idea is that a group of gals goes away somewhere. It could be a home that's large enough to accommodate your group, or it could be a hotel, Airbnb, a retreat center, and they spend a few days together creating. More on the location, things you might create, and tips for making it as comfy and cozy and smooth flowing as possible are coming up, but let's start with who you might do this with. You can do this with relatives, like we did this with my mom, my sisters, daughters, and nieces. You can do this with church or work friends, with staff at work or at church, with neighborhood ladies, with your home group people, or you can do this with a club that you're part of. This is a great way to get to know people and deepen your relationships with them because you spend a lot of time together. So then ask for what to create, what kind of projects. The obvious is physical items like crafts, artwork, sewing, painting, even mending, which would be a lot more fun to do with friends than it is at home. If it's something that you can transport and if there's a place at the location where you can put it, then you can take a Cricut, an ironing board, sewing machine, just anything that you can normally move from room to room or put into your car. Two more things that you can create. One is rejuvenation, like rest, relaxation. Especially if you're in a very demanding, challenging season of your life, you have lots going on and are really just in need of rest, your mission can be to just come and relax. And then the third thing that you can create is deeper relationships. As my friend Mary says, It's just not all about crafts. It's about forming relationships. And just a fun sisterhood. Just a time to be together uninterrupted. Next, you get to hear from my four fellow home group gals about what they like about create-a-thons. We've now made it an annual tradition because we enjoy them so much. So let's hear from them. The thing I love about create-a-thons is our interaction with each other. We can talk about anything. We can pray together. We can cry together. We can laugh together. And we just have fun and we can be quiet or we can be noisy. And yep. I just love our fellowship together. I like the create a because it's a block of time, first of all, like we've said, that we can just be with our friends, just sisters and sharing and no kids and no husbands, not that they're not good, but just a break <laughs> is always good for the heart. Um, I like sewing, but I don't always have a good chunk of time at home to sew because of distractions or obligations. So this is my weekend where I can just bring a project and I can do it as much as I feel like doing it, do it until I can't do it anymore. And I go home feeling very accomplished. It's fun, it's work, but I go home refreshed and I'm ready to face, face my world when I get home. So it's a lot of fun. What I enjoy about Creatathon is getting away from everything at home and being with my girlfriends, sharing time together, talking about whatever, laughing, crying, praying together and working on projects and hopefully getting them completely done and um, things that you don't get done at home and just getting refreshed, being together. Love that. The thing that I love is having an unscripted time that unfolds as the weekend goes. We can share our fun and silliness and we can share our, our heart, the things we don't have worked out yet, but we're working on it. And, um, find love and support and and be prayed for and and maybe not resolve things but just to know that there are answers to things and we will find them just to have that kind of support while we're creating things that we, we can't find the time for at home i look forward to it every year it's the most wonderful time to just rest and rejuvenate the thing that's so restful about it is that we're all doing on our own project that we want to do it's not forced, it's not put on us by somebody else to have to do this or accomplish it. So then, ask for what to create, what kind of projects. Next, you get to hear from several gals about the wide variety of things that they have made at create a I 
love bringing a sewing to the create-a-thons. I don't get a lot of time where I can sew at home, so I bring a project that I can work on. I made this quilt at a create-a-thon. Last year I brought my laptop and I organized pictures from a trip that the kids and I had taken. Um, but you could come and you could give yourself a pedicure and a manicure. You could do facials. I mean, there's lots of ideas, lots of fun things to do. The things I've done in the past at Create-a-thons, usually I always bring stuff to do on a laptop because I am not a sewer and I don't scrapbook, but I do love to make photo albums. Um, so I do a lot of creating with photos and creating books online and then I have them printed in a beautiful book that I've not glued and stuff. Another thing is I bring my Kindle. I do a lot of Kindle reading and journaling and uh, this time I've been working on just organizing just a lot of worksheets that I give out, how to pack, <laughs> mm -hmm. things like that. So one of the favorite photo books I created was my daughter, granddaughter and I, we all dressed in Victorian clothing and we went to an Anne of Green Gables tea all decked out. And so I had all the photos from in the morning when we were all helping each other dress and do hair through the tea, through the afternoon. And so I created a beautiful book for my daughter for her birthday. In the past, I've worked on photo albums, adding to or finishing or rebuilding. This time, I'm working on recipe books, family recipes, and making and creating family recipe books. I have some gardening stuff here that I want to plan out and work on. I worked on some note cards to give away to friends and family and one of my daughters asked me to write out some recipes for her recipe book so that she would have my handwriting. I did some reading and mostly trying to do some projects that I'm not getting to at home and getting to do here with people I enjoy visiting and catching up with and just chilling with. I work on something different every time I come. Um, I have done sewing. Yesterday, I finished a scrapbook that I had started. Well, I actually made it for my grandson. And then, over the last 10 years, it's kind of fallen apart. So I redid the whole thing for him. And, and I'm working on another little scrapbook right now. And um, I just cut my pictures apart and put them in. Another thing I really love about our Create-a-thon is that every single year, Barb teaches us some new technique. I love making cards. That's my passion. <laughs> and we do that here every time, make a card together or something. And I just love it. Hi, my name is Chrissy Shelton and I've been to many create-a-thons. Welcome to my quilting studio, actually sewing studio. Some things that I've made is this, um, it's like a crossbody sling kind of thing, um, a clutch, a concealed carry bag, crossbody bag, a laptop bag, it's got a front zip pocket to hold all the cords and stuff, and finally, a quilt from start to finish. Hello, I'm Carly Ann Pickett. I am Barb Shelton's favorite daughter, youngest and favorite. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm just going to show you a few things I've done at Create-a-thons in the past. These are basically mason jars. They don't have to be mason brand, but um, canning jars that started out clear. And then I just did like an etching stencil over them. This kind of gives a cool rustic look. And then I have some 
mugs I've painted, and that's just with some silver acrylic paint. This one's a mustache. This is just a fun big mug with some snowflakes on them. So those are just some of the things I have created at Create-a-thons in the past. Hi, I'm Shanessa Sandian. Welcome to my kitchen. About a year and a half ago, my hubby uh, remodeled this thing with lots of help from family and friends. He and my dad gutted it down to the studs. And so there was much to be done in here, but they got it sorted out, I think in about 10 weeks with a whole lot of, like I said, love from loved ones. And so anyway, I just love it out here. So I just wanted to show you a few things that I've done at Create-a-thons in the past, um, over the years, over many years. Um, a couple of my favorite things are scrapbooking and making cards. I've done classic scrapbooking where you glue pictures and you have your little photo corners you put on, but this is Project Life, which um, they make things really easy. You slip the pictures in and then they have these pre-made cards of various sizes that fill in other parts just to add a little bit of color and texture to your scrapbooking. So this is my favorite kind of scrapbooking that I've been doing probably the last five years. My friend Amy Inez told me about it and I love it. The other thing that I've done is, like I said, lots of cards, making lots of cards. Um, birthday cards, just thinking of you cards, friendship, anniversary. And I've also done some years Christmas cards. So I would do, I would pump out like 200 cards at one create-a-thon. And then lastly, I would just say, I think sometimes people who aren't necessarily super crafty, and when they hear about this kind of thing, they think, oh, I, what would I do for a weekend away? But over the years, we've had gals that have come and either they've been crafty, but not had anything in particular to craft with. So some gals have brought like their meal planning and they've, they've planned their meals for the next whatever, however long. Some gals have brought their laptops and organized photos. Some gals have brought their school plans and worked on like if they're homeschooling and they do some school planning while they're away. Some gals just come and chill out and talk to everybody else who is crafting and, um, and watch movies. So don't let the fact that this is like a crafty weekend away uh, keep you from going. It's, it's kind of a time for you to do that thing that's therapeutic for you, whatever that is. Um, and some people it really is the crafty kind of stuff, but others it might just be doing one of those things I already named or even doing those things that are always like on the back burner that don't ever quite get done. So that's what I would, that's what I would suggest. So I want to show you a few things that I've made at Create-a-thons as well. First I've got this little bucket and these are all napkins wrapped around the plastic ware with just a little flower stuck in there and a little bow. Over here I have got a little mini album and it's made out of, can you guess, toilet paper rolls. These are just so fun and cute. You've got little pull out tabs. Actually very easy to make. Remember that big, beautiful quilt that Tamara made? The one in Batik Fabrics? She let me take a whole bunch of her scraps and I got myself all these down here ready to turn into these little coasters. I like to call this miniature quilting. <laughs> Remember the four square coaster that I made? I took some of Tamara's fabrics and did that. And then another item is paint ceramic mugs to look like sunflowers. So this is what it looks like partially painted. I wanted to show you what it looks like done. So there's this and the sunflower on the bottom, the inside and the sides. And then I've also made wreaths. This one is made out of an embroidery hoop, as you can see here. And then the peonies are glued on, as well as these wooden half spheres, and then the greenery. And then I've also organized a lot of things at create a This one is my embossing folders file. In this last section, my gals are going to share some tips that will help make your create-a-thon go smoothly and be nice and cozy and comfy, which is what a create-a-thon is all about. These are things that we learned by doing things the hard way, although I'm not sure you could call a create-a-thon hard in any way, but they're things that we just kind of lived and realized, hey, this would be probably a really good idea to do next year or to bring next year. So let's hear from them. 
one of the things we do about our food is we decide like if we're going to the beach we will probably eat dinner out so we plan our breakfast and lunch for ourselves. we bring our own food for our breakfast and lunch and we all contribute for the snacking and share what we bring check with each other who's bringing coffee who's bringing tea and then for dinner if we're not going to eat out like say we're staying in a home and we're not going to be going and eating out then we all contribute to bringing something for dinner one night and taking care of that dinner and then the next night another sister will take care of the food for that night And then we do go out to a restaurant to eat in the evenings if we're at a facility where there's restaurants close by. A nice, sweet way to end the day creating going out to eat together. Some of you may not like anything to do with cooking and may choose to go to like a retreat center where all the food is taken care of is, except for like your snacking. And so that's really nice because you just kind of take a break from your projects, go and eat, come back, start back up in your projects. You don't have to mess with food. So some considerations about where you're going. Everybody needs to know how big the place is so they can kind of tailor their project to how much elbow room they're going to have. We have just five of us in this nice apartment. I've got room for my own table. Um, but if there are quite a few of you and there's just a small space, you might just be able to bring a little TV table or like sit at the dining room table with a tray full of things that you can remove when it's meal time. So that's a consideration just so that everybody knows how big the space is and how much they can bring so there's not one woman taking up so much room that not everybody has a space for their own project. So just some courtesy considerations. Another thing to consider in your group is what type of agenda you're going to have or not have. So if you discuss it among the group that you're going to be going with, what your expectations are. So like, is everybody going to bring their nursing baby or is this a group that's no kids? Is there going to be a certain time for meals? Is there going to be a certain time to wake up or is everybody just going to be free to do what they want at whatever time? If you are at like some type of retreat center, their meals are at certain times. So if you're not up at that time, you don't get breakfast or lunch or, or whatever. So that's something to consider. Another thing is that it's important that if it's a create-a-thon, most people go because they want to create. It's not just about fellowship, that you're bringing things that you want to work on. So if somebody doesn't bring enough to work on and they're constantly wanting to visit with you so that you can't work on your project, so everybody needs to bring enough to work on. That's what I came for. Besides fellowship with my friends, I'm here to get things done that I don't have time to do at home. You know, we're all here to create. So, you know, just make sure that everybody's expectations are on the table so that you're not disappointed or frustrated, that you're just communicating with the people that you care about that you're going to be spending time with. A lot of times at different creative-thons in the past, Barb has brought a craft for everybody to do or we can sign up ahead of time so that she knows how much stuff to bring and it's totally optional. Um, you can sign up for it or not sign up for it. So that's just something to consider too. like to share just a little bit about the location of your creative fund. Of course it's going to depend on how many people you're going to include or the location will depend on how many people can come. So um, we have stayed in a retreat center which Usually everybody will have their own room or two in a room, 
we've stayed in somebody's home a little more cozy. But you know, you're getting together to fellowship with your friends and to build closeness and small quarters actually bring that about. It's much more um, intimate. We stayed in places that were kind of cold, so you might want to bring extra clothes. Know where you're going ahead of time and what time of the year it is, and keep that in your mind. When you get there, you don't want to be surprised. So, so space heaters might be yeah uh, help as well. Yes. Another thing I bring every time, hot or cold, is my little horn sack that I heat up in the microwave. There's always somebody in the room, usually it has a little bit of back, it's a little bit achy, and it feels so good just to lean back on a corn sack. Just share with each other, share what you bring, and bring cozy blankets to snuggle up into while you're working or in bed. This, it just seems to not matter where we are. We always need extension cords, multiple outlet strips. Be sure that you just take some time to take walks. That's part of the fun. Get out of the room a little bit. So you guys have heard a few different trains of thought on chatting at the Creatathons, bringing a project, not bringing a project. So I'm just going to share my thoughts. Um, I totally understand both sides of the spectrum here. I feel that each person can have a different purpose in why they're going, and it can even change from year to year. One, one time you could go to a Creatathon uh, because you, know, you want a fellowship, but you also have some crafting projects, art, whatever that you really want to get done, you really need to work on. Another year you could go and you just want to fellowship and relax and get away and retreat. If you do have a project that you really need to concentrate to work on and focus on, I can't socialize, that's probably not the right project to bring to a retreat, a creative thought. Part of it is to create. but. A big portion is also to get away and to be with other ladies and to fellowship. But then there also can be people who are super chatty or they didn't bring anything and so maybe those people could be sensitive to the people that are working on projects to maybe not chat their ear off or the person doing the project who needs for a little bit, you concentrate, that's okay. So maybe they could tell the person chatting like, hey, I would really love to hang out and chat with you. but. I just need to focus and concentrate on this for a little bit. Can we chat later? If you do have other things you want to do and you don't want to be interrupted, then you know maybe go into your room on your own for a little while. But again, I would be careful to not have too much of the retreat and what you're wanting to do at the retreat be where you need to focus. You need to be on your own. You can't be you know socializing because a huge portion of this is to be with people. The biggest thing is communicating, figuring out your needs, figuring out other people's needs, and then just take it from there. Thanks for being here. Thanks for joining. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for your time. Thanks for tuning in. And thanks for and I want to thank each of my special guests for joining me and enriching this video with their sweet and helpful insights and perspectives.